Hey YouTubers, it's Rai Rai here, and once again I have another Battlefield 4 Know Your Role video. This time we're going to be taking a look at the Scout Helicopter, and the Scout Helicopter primarily used in a role that I like to call the Anti-Armor Role. Now what that means is, whereas my previous Scout Hel Helicopter Know Your Role video we concentrated on an Anti-Air Role, this one we're actually going to be using it to take out air vehicles, ground vehicles, boats, IFVs, tanks, and also infantry. So basically uh, using uh, loadouts, passengers, kind of a squad used together in a way that you can take out anything on the battlefield. So let's go ahead and get started. Now before I get into the particulars of how to kind of run each class and, and each pilot and the passenger and what you want to run on your scout helicopter to do this, I want to kind of explain what you're seeing here. Basically what we're using is the pilot's going to be using the guided missile and instead of having two engineers as passengers, you're going to have one engineer as a passenger and one recon player as a passenger. And that recon player, as you see I'm doing here, is going to basically be spotting with the PLD laser designator. Now what that allows you to do is much like how the scout helicopters were in Battlefield 3 where you could sit in that four seat and control control the laser designator for the scout helicopter, you're kind of doing that, it's just you're using one of the passengers to do it. But what this does is give you just immense capabilities on the battlefield in the scout helicopter. You're now able to take out vehicles of any type uh, at any, you know, at, at basically uh, all types of ranges. It's also great for spotting enemy, not only enemy vehicles, but enemy infantry as well. And just a, a great way to t kind of own the battlefield and have, have some sort of effect on every vehicle in the game. My previous Battlefield Know Your Role video for the Scout Helicopter, we talked about using the Stinger missiles and having engineers and owning the skies. This, this video here, what we're going to be talking about, is basically using the loadout to be able to destroy any vehicle on the map, and not just air vehicles, but ground vehicles as well, boats, IFEs, tanks, all that. So that's kind of the videos you're going to be seeing here, mostly me doing my recon, and us, you know, my, my passenger, or my, the other passenger, and the pilot are going to be shooting off guided missiles and straw rockets towards the enemies, and just basically destroying any vehicle we find, and that's really what we're we're doing in, the, in these videos is hunting down vehicles so and it's a fun way to play especially uh, I like to do these know your role videos as really having like squad based tactics how could you and a couple of your buddies pair up and really dominate the battlefield this is a great way to do it and very kind of uh, um, uh, a high advanced tactical way of doing it but if you guys coordinate and do it right you should be very successful so let's go ahead now I'm gonna get into kind of the loadouts and kits that you want to run when doing this type of warfare so obviously let's talk about the scout helicopter itself if you're piloting the scout helicopter the main thing is you want to have the guided missiles you know unlocked and being in and using those instead of your heat seekers now again I, I don't recommend doing this if you're using a lone wolf type of loadout or not working with a squad mate or a teammate who's going to be designating targets for you because you will be susceptible to uh, the other scout helicopter or aircraft really you know taking you out pretty quickly so it's good to use uh, you know as a in the role where you're working with the squad as we're doing here um, what you want to be running, uh, I'd say again, is the guided missile countermeasures, you know, flares or ECM, whichever you prefer. 20 millimeter cannons uh, tend to work best against other ground vehicles as well as infantry uh, to take out any infantry on the ground. Um, and, and then the rest is kind of up to you. Gyro stabilizer, I think, is, is one you have to have on there, some of those things. But really, it's the guided missiles that make the most sense. So now, if you are the pilot, here's what I suggest I suggest running as a support class. You say, well, support class? Why would I run with a support class? Well, because of one key reason, um, you can run an ammo bag to resupply the other one of the your, you know your passengers, especially the passenger that's shooting off his straw rockets, because he might run out. You can always land and drop an ammo bag. But more importantly, the indirect fire upgrade allows you to resupply your teammates once you hit that fourth level. And when you're all working together in uh, um, the helicopter together, you're going to go up to that fourth tier of your upgrades pretty quick. So you want to be sure that you are working with your buddies uh, as best you can. That infinite fire upgrade that the support class has allows you in occupied vehicles to resupply nearby enemies. So they'll be able to resupply rockets re and also resupply guns, uh, their, their main guns as well, which is important. We'll get into that later. Now for the first passenger, this is... um. 
what I'm ba basically been running. You want a recon class player, going to be using the personal laser designator uh, to spot enemy vehicles, laser targeting on vehicles, as well as spotting out any enemy troops that are on the ground that might be shooting stingers or iglas at you. Um, I'd suggest also running with C4. Reason being is if, let's say, as you're flying over an enemy tank or, or something like that, you can always drop a couple C4 out and sometimes get a lot of lucky kills that way. And if you coordinate that with a pilot, you can actually do it. It's a lot of fun. Uh, uh, and a really cool thing to do when you you know get a couple kills with some C4 you're dropping from a helicopter. Be careful though because depending on where you drop it you may actually apply it to the helicopter and blow yourself up. Make sure you're looking away and you throw it kind of away from the helicopter. And then I also run with that recon class with the carbine and reason being for that is you in the passenger seat have a responsibility to also try and get fire, gunfire on enemy uh, infantry. Uh, a carbine with something like a, a, a red dot scope or a one-time uh, magnification scope will really help in taking out infantry. And you'll even pick up kills that way. So uh, that's a good thing to do is run it with a carbine class. Now for the second passenger, I would suggest using, of course, the engineer class. And how I usually like to have it set up is run with a SRAW. Uh, I guess you can run Javelin too, but I, I suggest the straw is probably a little bit better in this case. Uh, run with a straw and a repair tool and a mechanic, the mechanic upgrade. Now, some people say, well, why would you run it with the anti-tank upgrade to get the extra rockets? Well, if you have the in indirect fire upgrade, the pilot has that, you're all of it. You're going to be reloading your rockets, and you can also always land in a safe spot, drop an ammo bag, reload your rockets, and get back in the air if you need to. It's more important because there's only one mechanic who can repair because the other seat's taken up by the recon class. You want to be sure that that engineer has a repair tool and a mechanic upgrade to get you know, as healed up as quickly as you can because you are going to be susceptible, uh, like always in these helicopters, to enemies on the ground, uh, engineers with SRA rock, or I'm sorry, but with um, stingers and iglas, as well as the other um, chopper. Most other scout choppers, let's say you go up against, are not going to be running like this. So they're going to have heat seekers and be shooting heat seekers at you and possibly an, uh, an engineer or two in the, in the passenger seat of the enemy helicopter shooting um, stingers at you. So you want to make sure that you have an engineer that can repair and repair quickly that way you can keep this thing alive now one of the final things I want to mention to you guys when running this squad type of, of setup with the scout helicopter and with other vehicles is use them kind of in a joint operations type scenario meaning that here we have the squad helicopter and we're flying with three of our squad members well you still have let's say two squad members that can maybe get into a tank now, if they decide they're going to run as a secondary, maybe a guided shell as well, and maybe the tank gunner can run his secondary as a, a SOFLAM so he can desi designate targets, well, now all of a sudden you have two vehicles that can work together to achieve objectives. So if the tank is running over and, and moving over towards Alpha, we can fly the helicopter over by Alpha, and now we, we're going to be able to get multiple guided missiles on any enemy armor. We're able to get guns and spot any enemy infantry that's out there. If I got guys that, with stingers that are shooting our helicopter, the tank can go ahead and, and get in and try and take them out because they're less of a threat to the tank because they don't have anything really except maybe a repair tool or slam mines, let's say, to try and take out the tank. So it just becomes a really fun scenario where you as a well-tuned squad can kind of use two vehicles almost as like they're one and be kind of the tip of the spear uh, in the battle and really dominate. We were actually doing that and you'll see some of the Silk Road gameplay I have here. That's what we were doing on Silk Road. We happened to get uh, a tank with two of our guys uh, or one or two of our guys working with us and it just made it a ton more fun when I'm designating targets and not only is uh, the, the engineer with the straw and the scout helicopter pilot hitting it with guided shells but there's also a tank that's also going to that same objective we're going to that's hitting whatever I'm designating with guided shells as well so it just makes for a lot more fun when you have a, a full cohesive unit that way and, and to me that's what really separates Battlefield 4 and the Battlefield series from any other military shooter out there is the team squad based gameplay that when you get it together and your, your squad is really clicking together and you have four or five players playing for the squad playing together uh, you know adjusting and, and adapting their gameplay on the fly to do these types of things it, you the glory is to be had by all it's not just the guy that gets the kill and shoots it down it's that we are all kind of in on it and this is a lot of fun and 
we're dominating the map now. We're just having a great time destroying anything this other team throws at us because we're working together as a squad and, and doing these types of, of operations together. And it's just a lot of fun. I suggest the Scout Chopper. We had a great time doing it. Uh, thanks to DC Jameson, HJ, uh, Thrace, and Havoc for helping me you know, get the video and put it together when I was, was thinking about doing something like this and said, let's try it out. They were all for it. They're like, yeah, sure. What do you need me to switch to? And we did it and realized we're having a blast. Let's just keep doing this every time we play, whether I'm recording for these videos or not. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching again. I appreciate it. You guys have been great. I love my subscribers. Uh, you guys have been fantastic in leaving a lot of positive feedback and comments. And so long as you do that, I'll keep pumping these videos out and, and doing the best I can to help us make us all better Battlefield players. And until next time, this is Rai Rai. Take care.